There ain't no way I'm going to like the third round pick we have. Mm. Who is a famous tale of caution in the NFL at this point because of all the issues that came across with him. And that is Demontre Moore. Third round pick. Pick number 81 overall. And he was originally supposed to be a top 10 pick in this draft because that's what people thought of him coming out of his last year there at Texas A&M. And his stock just dropped after a really poor combine performance there. Um, After that, he was anticipated to be a late first round to early second round. But he slid all the way down. Like I said, we got him at the 81st pick in the third round. That's not even an early third round, guys. (laughs) <laughs> you think about yeah. it. 30, 32 teams in the league. That means there's 64 picks. He was a mid third round pick at that point. You know, um, he played for the Giants overall for almost three seasons. Not even almost full three seasons. Almost. Uh, in 2015 is where all the issues really kind of happened here. So uh, he was a healthy scratch a week seven after a horrible roughing the passer penalty uh, was made the prior week. Uh, he was kind of known for a lot of dumb mental errors that he made on the field, that kind of stuff where he kind of lost his cool, did a stupid move that really hurt the team as a result. Um, so he also had a lot of issues with t- with, uh, with teammates, including getting to a fight. I, and it's funny, when I look at this, this stuff up, the notes for this, I totally forgot about this issue until it happened. You know, and then I looked it up up again. It was at that point, like the end of his Giants career. And I'm like, oh my god, I completely forgot about this. This was a big thing when this happened. Uh, he got into a fight with teammate Cullen Jenkins for a practice because he didn't get free headphones like other players on the team did. Literally fought a dude over headphones, which is crazy because he makes enough. Well, he made enough where he could buy those headphones. Exactly. And it was apparently one of many, many maturity issues that he had shown the team. So they cut him. At the time, Jerry Reese, who was the the, the GM for many years with the Giants, said, we've made the move today in the interest of both parties. That's, uh, that is a very telling short statement. You're fired. There was no thank you for his time. Thank you for his efforts. Like, this was the best move for everybody involved. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. That's basically where it was at. Like, yeah, that's that's not good when that when a GM makes that kind of statement. You no. know, he didn't say no comment. He made it out of his way to say point blank, like, yeah, this guy was an issue. We gotta let him go. That's that's bad. pretty much. Now you would think that his career would be over at that point. What if I told you guys he was still playing as of a couple weeks ago? We'll get I into mean, that. <laughs> we'll get into that. But that's that's how crazy and long this career is about to get. So let's 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 give his stats with the Giants there, since we're talking about that be ending here. So forty two games overall, zero starts, forty three tackles, three uh, passes deflected, two forced fumbles, one fumble recovered, eight and a half sacks, eight tackle for the loss, twenty four QB hits. So it wasn't like he'd never performed because if you think about it, there. Three four tackle a uh, three four sacks a season as a backup edge rusher. That's not not nothing. It's not great. Don't get me wrong. We're not writing home about that and saying, oh my god, this guy should be a starter. But as a young player in this league, he showed some potential. But the head case issues were just were too much. Um look at you, Tony. Yeah. <laughs> he is the Kadarius Tony of edge rushers. Yeah. Um so yeah, like I said, he became quite, quite the journeyman afterwards. Let's go down the list. And Ooh, it, it, this is this may be the long longest list. list of teams that a guy plays for in all of our three draft recaps we're going to do, probably. Um, 2015, like I said, we cut him. The Dolphins picked him up for the rest of the season. He then signed up with the Raiders, but was cut Suckers. and ended up spending the 16th season with the Seattle Seahawks. Suckers. 2017 was with the Dallas Cowboys, which he was suspended for the first two games for violating the league's substance abuse policy. Suckers. 2018, he's with the Oakland Raiders. 
Oh, 2019, he played for X Rams head coach Mike Martz, who was the head coach now for the San Diego Fleet of the Alliance of American Football, the AAF. You guys may remember that was like a one season thing that just didn't make it. Uh, in eight games there, he actually had a decent time. So, eight games, he had 22 tackles, seven sacks, and one fumble recovery. Um, later on that year, he played for the San Francisco 49ers. 2020 ends up back with the Seattle Seahawks again. Oh, Dell Suckers. 2021 ends up on the Carolina Panthers practice squad. That's a little oh. crazy there. 2022 goes to the CFL, plays for the Toronto Argonauts, but a season ended with an injury right after the very first game. 2023 spent a month with the Montreal Alouettes. Then he got picked up by the Calgary Stampeders for the rest of the season. And he was cut by the Stampeders earlier this month and is currently a free agent. So literally this month, June 2024, that we're in right now as we're recording this, that's when he got cut. So he's still playing football after getting into a fight Lovely. over headphones over a decade ago. So that's a little crazy. Overall for his career, I'm going to give just NFL stats because it's too much. They're going CFL, AAF. I gave you yeah, yeah, yeah. 66 games, zero starts, 97 tackles, four passes deflected, four forced fumbles, one um, fumble recovery, 11 sacks, 12 tackles for loss, and 36 QB hits. So you can see most of his stats still came with this time with the Giants. Like two thirds of his stats were in that first two years. He was just a bit player that was on practice squads and bounced around to active occasionally kind of thing. But overall, he played for eight NFL teams, one AAF team, and three CFL teams so far. So far, because he has not retired. He still could get yeah. picked up by another CFL team or maybe go play for the Rock in the uh, XFL, UFL thing, whatever that thing is now called. It's still you a thing. Know, I, I, it is still a thing. Actually, they just had their championship, I think. But yeah, so they'll be back next year. So it's just crazy. I mean, he's now married, uh, has two children, a son and a daughter. Um, I can tell you on his social media, he has he does a lot of religious stuff on there. So I don't know if maybe he's, you know, used that as a way to kind of mature and age appropriately. I hope so for his sake, because that's just crazy. Well, I remember that him getting how do you get in a fight with a teammate over headphones? Like how much could those headphones possibly cost you? If it's a hundred dollars, hundred and fifty dollars, that's like a top top end headphone. Yes, exactly. I'm assuming it's not a recording headphone. Like this one here is like that I got on me is like $160 headphones. But like most headphones that you that you get for just listening to music, even like back then was probably Beats. Probably still uh, before Apple bought out Beats, it's probably that. And even those maybe 200 bucks tops. Yeah. So yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Like you get good old Beats back in the day. Beats great. Right? Yeah, the, the, that's why they were the, their beats the, by Dre. They just love the they, show. They were the, 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 the doctor. The, God damn it, he must be good. The problem with the beats by Ray is like when you well the plus when you go to the Dre, gym, not after, Ray, Dre, yeah. Oh, who said Ray? I'm like, who's uh, Ray? Beats by Ray. We had beats by Dre back in the day. And you went oh, to the gym I and they look did. like this. Hold on, Rob's about to drop a sick rhyme now. Look at this. Beast by Dre back in the day. <laughs> you went to the gym. You were powerful. You looked great, but you couldn't hear how good everyone was telling, like saying how good you looked because you were wearing sick those the sick beats by Dre. <laughs> so I never had this problem. So I just avoided the gym. Oh, touche. It's exactly why I avoided the gym to avoid just such a scenario. Oh well, I always bought cheap headphones just so I could hear how. <laughs> Great, it looked. Well, oh, I see what it is. This is this is this is this is a whip him thing for you. <laughs> <laughs> I should have bought this, those things. Uh, this is this is not a whip him. It's, it's a, uh, a FOMO, the fear of missing out here. This guy was cool. <laughs> I had a reason. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like I said, I, I listen. I don't. I said, we talk about players. We talk about what we know. What we hear of players. I don't pretend to know people I don't know. Uh, I, I, you know. The fact that he's had such a large career, you know, makes me think he probably did grow up at some point, you know, 
he had a little his issues. Least. Again, you have the you have the fights with the Giants, the other issue with other teammates that a lot of them didn't even come out fully what it was, but it was well known that he had issues with multiple teammates. You know, you had the issue with the you know the the substance abuse policy issue when he was back with 2017. You know, he's had a lot of issues. So, you know, I hope for his sake he he did grow up because listen, we all make dumb decisions in life. We all were young and stupid. Let's be honest. Let's call it what it is, young and stupid. We sometimes forget these kids when they get drafted at that point. They're not all like 30 years old like Michael Penix Jr., okay? And our Bo Nix. <laughs> Some are 20. Some are 20, 21, 22. I mean, listen, I did stupid things that age. I like to think I wouldn't get into a fight with somebody over headphones when I was making that kind of money. It's for damn sure. Yeah. but I was probably more like the Johnny Menzel back in the day. Yeah, but it's like... <laughs> I, I feel like I want to level it a little bit because, like I said, like, you know, we all did something stupid back then. We all made poor decisions. We were kids back then. He was a kid then, too, 22 years old or so, you know, like maybe 23. It's like two years in the league at this point. You know, I wasn't growing up at 23. No. I think sometimes we forget the amount of pressure these guys have on them. Now, the substance abuse thing, that's a whole different thing, obviously. It was back yeah. in 2017 at that point. So you figure. You know, he's he way was older for four years, so he's probably 25 around there at least. Where you should have grown up a little past that kind of stuff. But listen, like I said, we all make mistakes. The fact that he's got to be around at least for all these different teams when he hasn't produced a lot, let's be honest, either hasn't produced a lot. Yeah, and that's probably he's, why he was saying stop. No, but I'm saying it makes me think that he probably did grow up at some point. It probably is not a horrible guy, just made really poor decisions early in life. Yeah, probably. But he will always be known for the headphone issue. You might not remember him for it immediately, but the second you hear Kellen Jenkins headphones fight, you're like, oh yeah, that's the guy. <laughs> like you'll remember <laughs> that exactly. immediately. Because that's a big thing when I can say when it happened. It really was. So thanks for thanks for listening to Two Giant Goofballs, a New York Giants podcast. We appreciate your support. Thanks so much.